Hello everybody, welcome back to my studio. This is Emma. Um, this afternoon I thought I would just share with you um, a little bit of printing into a sketchbook to show you how to pre-prepare some pages or you can just simply use this for printing onto paper and just enjoy the pattern making that you'll do with it. Um, I do like to put all my projects into a sketchbook so I work into them, I add ideas, I write things, I stick things, when I make samples I stitch them into the sketchbook as well so I've got a complete sort of record of what I've been working on. But it, <coughs> oh, excuse me. But it all starts very very simply we're taking a ring binder sketchbook like this one and I just simply, oops, I'll just turn that around so you can perhaps see it better when I cut into it. Um, I do several pages at a time and I have a little tiny pair of scissors and I just simply cut in between the wires like that. Nice little snippy noise. It's actually very satisfying doing this. It's sort of, I know I'm starting a new project when I'm beginning to cut the pages out of a sketchbook. And I'm sorry to use the word sketchbook. I know for some people a sketchbook is really kind of a scary thing. I've learnt to overcome that fear and now I just use it as a place. I call it a record book or just a workbook. Um, and as I say, you don't actually have to do this in a book at all. You can just use, the, use um, pieces of paper. Just, that hasn't quite snipped all the way through. There we go. Just pulling the page out like that. You have to pull quite hard, but not, not so that you tear it, okay? So that gives you pieces of paper that you can then print onto. So I'm just going to put the book over there out of the way. The next thing I re really need for this printing process is a piece of Perspex. This is one that I've used many times. You can see perhaps that it's got bits of paint on it already that haven't quite been washed off properly. Uh, you can use glass, um, but it is a little bit more risky if you crack it, you're in trouble. Um, I tend to use acrylic paint for this just because I can sort of, um, I don't know, control the effects of it more easily. I guess if you don't want to use acrylic, you could use watercolour or something like that. Um, so I'll just squeeze a little bit out of this tube. Yep, there we go. I thought I'd try and choose a bright colour that you can actually see. Um, let's just see whether we can that I'm just going to stop for a second and just re-angle the camera because we're not quite seeing that. There we go, we'll just try that again. There's a blob of paint and it's a paintbrush. This is a really old paintbrush. I think it goes back to when my daughter was small. So it's a nice thick chunky one. You don't want anything fancy. And I've actually perhaps put a bit too much water on that. I perhaps should have drained the brush a little bit more before I started painting it. But I'm not going to worry about it. We'll just see what happens when I pop the piece of paper onto the perspex, onto the paint. Now you could just simply use your hand to rub that across like that and press it down. I'm going to use a ruler, a ruler, strange ruler, a ruler, a ruler, um, which actually has a very nice squeak, just because it's actually a bit quieter for filming this. And also, you will get a more even print. But, you know, I usually just use my hand and that works fine. So that's just created, that's actually just gone, because it's so wet, that's actually just created a plain, fairly plain background. But that's okay because I can probably just overprint that. And I think what I will do, in fact, I will put on here a bit of a stronger colour. Put a bit of that on and um, I did have some green, I've got a little bit of green. I think I might mix these two together a little bit. And I'm just going to squeeze some of the water out of that brush. It's not too wet this time. So that's nice. That's kind of mixing mixing the colours up a bit. Quite like that. So bright green and turquoise. What a nice combination. It's kind of springtime meets the seaside. So another piece of paper. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm just laying that down gently. And I'm going to take, ooh, in fact, I'll just use the end of that brush. I'm just going to do some little marks on it, like this. Oops. And we'll just see what happens. I've no idea what's going to happen. This is what I love about it, is you never quite know what it's going to turn out like. Everything's a bit of a surprise. Okay. So there's some lines there that are stronger than the others. It all depends on how how wet your paint is. 
as to what effect you get. So what you'll find is as you do quite a few of these, you'll get your eye in, and as you sort of work away, you'll realise the effects that you can achieve, depending on what your paint is like and what your colour mix is like. I always like to make sure my edges are fairly covered. So I quite like that. That's, that's, that's not out of the way. Um, what I thought I would do next is put some of that down. It's not terribly thick, but it's okay. It'll do. It'll do. And one of my favourite things is bubble wrap. Bubble wrap just makes such a pleasurable print. And it's always different. I know it's very round and I very it's often very regular, but by the time I've printed it over a few with a diff few different colours perhaps, um, uh, it's not necessarily as regular as you think it's going to be. So there we go, we'll just pop that over the top of the paper. I'm going to roller it again, just it means I can hold on to one end and just roller and we'll see what happens with that. satisfying crinkly sort of sound. Lift that off. There we go. So that's got two colours on it and I think that's really quite effective. It's definitely worth, I think, with the bubble wrap doing a colour underneath. It's a much softer effect. That's quite harsh. But that's something you might like. And what you could do if this was just on paper, you could be tearing these strips up and using them as strips to add on to other things. Not, what I find with printing is one thing leads to another. It's never an absolute. You might start off with one idea, uh, one colour, um, and it's amazing how it all develops from that. So I'm just going to take the back of that. That's fairly dry. I'm just going to take the back of that and stick that on there. Just gently roll that over the perspex that's had the bubble wrap on, and we'll see what effect that has. So that's got a much more sort of blodgy effect. It's much softer compared to this first print that was quite sharp. That one's much softer print, uh, which I do like. I like everything that I print because each one has its own um, character. So I'm just the last thing I'm going to do just for this afternoon. Again, I'm just I'm going to add a little bit of water onto that, I think, because it's not quite a little bit dry. Just try and do it so you can see it. I've got a lovely piece uh, of corrugated cardboard, which actually has already had some green on it. So I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to use my roller. But you can just use your hands. It doesn't have to be a roller. Just take the paint off onto the cardboard, move that out of the way, and have a fresh piece of paper. Now what you can do, of course, you could actually put your paper on top of, I've got my paper on top of that cardboard actually, and, do, and roll it that way. It might make a different print to if I do it the other way up. Who knows? That's quite a, a nice faded sort of effect on there. And... What I'm going to do is take the specs with those nice marks on. The last thing I'm going to do is put a piece of paper on there, take my roller up over the top, and we'll see what happens when I do that. There we go. So nothing's been wasted. Um, as I say, one thing leads to another once you start printing. And I would just say, get some paint, get some paper, and have some fun. See you again soon. Bye for now.